Aloha all. My name is Odysseus Quarles and I'm an outreach intern at the International Gemini Observatory, a program of the National Science Foundation's Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory, or Noir Lab. Welcome to Gemini's second episode of MKO at Home. If you haven't seen Gemini's first episode featuring Alyssa Leinani Grace explaining Earth's new mini moon, you can catch it on this channel along with videos from our friends at other Mauna Kea observatories. Check them out if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about one of the newest and weirdest tools astronomers are using to explore our universe, gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are like ripples in space. You see, space isn't actually empty. Sure, there's lots of stuff in space between stars and planets and interstellar dust, but even if you took out all of the stuff, there's still something there. Astronomers call it space-time. It's sort of a four-dimensional fabric made up of the three spatial dimensions, up and down, forward and back, left and right, we're all familiar with, and of course, the one dimension of time. Everything in the universe sits in and moves through space-time. We can picture space-time as something like an imaginary sheet of stretchy fabric. Heavier things, or as astronomers would say, objects with more mass, bend the fabric of space-time more. This is what causes gravity. Objects don't actually pull on each other directly. Instead, they bend space-time, and everything else inside space-time, whether that's you, me, a baseball being knocked out of the park, the space station, even the moon, everything has to follow the curves of space-time. Gravitational waves are caused when something jiggles space-time. Just like a trampoline jiggles when you jump on it, when something heavy moves around in space-time, it shakes up space-time and sends out gravitational waves. The trouble is, gravity is actually very, very weak. In fact, even though it affects everything, it's the weakest force in the universe. Think about it like this. The Earth is huge. It's so big, we can't see how it curves when we're standing on it, and pretty much the whole thing is made out of rock. And if you've ever tried to pick up a rock that's the same size as you are, you know, that's pretty heavy. So the Earth is so unimaginably heavy, but we, us little tiny things sitting on the surface of the Earth, we can still beat its gravity. We can stand up, climb ladders, we can even jump, stay up on the air for, you know, a little bit. But if gravity is so, so weak, we need something very, very heavy if we're ever going to find a gravitational wave signal. For that, we have to look to black holes. Black holes are the heaviest, densest, most extreme objects in the universe. They're the leftovers from after the big, biggest stars in the universe use up all their fuel and explode. And they're so heavy that nothing, not even light itself, can escape them. It bends space-time so much that it's like they punch a hole all the way through it. That's how they get their name, black holes. The only thing that comes out of a black hole is its own gravity. The largest gravitational wave ripples are created when two black holes merge into one. As they orbit, spinning closer and closer and closer to each other, they jiggle space-time a bunch and send out huge amounts of energy in the form of gravitational waves. In the last tenth of a second before their collision, two black holes can emit more than 50 times as much energy as the entire rest of the observable universe combined. But almost none of that is light that we can see with telescopes. Instead, we use detectors called gravitational wave observatories. The most famous of these is LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. LIGO is actually two detectors, one in Louisiana and one in Washington, and together they can tell us where in the universe a signal came from. Each detector has two perpendicular four kilometer long tunnels that are constantly being precisely measured by a laser. These lasers can measure the tiniest, tiniest variations in the length of a tunnel, even less than the width of an atom. The detectors have to be this sensitive because even though the black hole collision is so energetic, by the time the signal reaches us, it could have been traveling and dissipating for billions of years. The signals we get are very, very faint. When a gravitational wave passes through the detectors, the ripples in space-time shorten one arm while stretching out the other, and then stretch out the first arm and shorten the other, switching back and forth between shortening and stretching hundreds of times in a second. LIGO got its first signal on September 14th, 2015. This was a huge day for astronomy. We've always been able to look up and see the stars, and for hundreds of years we've built telescopes to help us see farther into the universe. In the last century, we've had our eyes opened even more with radio telescopes and space telescopes showing us sights our eyes could never see. But in 2015, with the first gravitational wave observatory, we were finally able to open our ears. 
This is what we heard. Did you hear that? That low chirp is the sound of two black holes colliding in a galaxy over a billion light years away. Let's listen again. Gravitational waves are exciting for us at optical observatories too. Black holes aren't the only things that can cause them. White dwarfs and neutron stars, the leftovers from exploded stars that weren't quite big enough to create black holes, are also very heavy and very dense on their own. And they can collide in the same way as black holes. Before LIGO, that would have been very difficult for us to spot on our own. But now gravitational wave observatories can find those collisions and tell us where to point our telescopes to see something nobody has ever seen before. Anytime we get a new tool to explore our universe, we learn things that we never could have expected. At Gemini, we're excited to see what the future of gravitational wave observations brings. If you have any questions or comments about this video, tag at Gemini Ops or hashtag MKO at home, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Mahalo nui to you for watching, and stay tuned for more MKO at home resources.